Hey guys, good evening and thanks for joining. So in the last class, we discussed about uh, networking configurations. In the network tab, we have to configure DNS server integration, proxy server integration, and also network interfaces configuration. Okay. So then even we have to configure about the routing part. Okay. That is about uh, network interfaces configuration. Even in case you are facing any issues related to uh, networking and also uh, troubleshooting something or debugging something, we can do the packet capture. That is a part of networking. Uh, next one, we have started security profiles. So why we started security profiles first? Because in the policies and objects tab, we have to assign the security profiles. So antivirus, we have discussed already. Web filter, video filter is completed. DNS filter is already completed. Application control also completed. IPS also completed. Next one is file filter. So in this file filter, it can inspect what our files are receiving. So example, that may be inbound file or outbound file. Meaning here, example, email attachments. Email attachments, whatever it is coming as a inbound email or outbound email, it will inspect. And in case that email contains any malicious malware content, so either it will block or allow, or maybe it will be reset or maybe it will, it will clean. So that is one thing, even in our organization level, okay, dangerous files we can block. I already told you several times this one also. Example, .dll file, it's one of the dangerous category. Second one is 7GP is one of the category. RAR is one of the category. So these are all the different types of files are harmful to our organization level. So now what we have to do, just we have to click on add button and we have to define the match file files. Okay. And the action we have to give block file types. File types means what I just now I told you. So example dot dll dot exe dot doc jpg. Okay. So if you want, you can put as a monitor. If you want, you can put as a block, or if you want, you can put it allow. So those are all the different types of actions. Okay. So we want to configure and it will inspect those files. So that is our file filter. So allowing of the files as well as the blocking of the files. Next one is voice voice or IP, vivo IP. So Vivo IP is a voice over IP, example of voice over IP. So you can see this one. This is the perfect example for voice over IP. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. yeah, this is the voice over IP in couple of especially BPO sector. When I say BPO sector, call center kind of jobs, they have to work in the 24 bar seven using these phones only, voice over IP calls. Okay, they have to call a customer and they have to speak with the customer that may be healthcare related or banking related or finance related. So any other voice or IP related. So they will call the customer and they will ask about the okay respect to requirement and finally they'll give solutions. So most of the organizations, they will use these type of phones. Those phones will work on voice or IP. So example, we have at and It's one of the very, very popular voice or IP. Cisco also one of the very, very popular. Juniper, IBM, Huawei, uh, then Aruba, Avaya. So these are all the very, very popular voice or IP related products. So Cisco, this is Cisco related. Okay. So if you want to monitor related to voice or IP traffic, we will use two different types of protocol. One is SAP, session initiation protocol. Example, Maybe if you want to call to me in a mobile, in between you and me, one session will form. The session, it will use one of the telecommunication protocol. So that's called SAP, session initiation protocol. Okay. And also one more protocol, it will be SCCP, skinny connection connected protocol. Skinny connection connected protocol. That is also another protocol. In the voice or IP profile, what exactly we have to provide? So how many requests it has to accept? Okay. In case in our organization level, voice or IP related calls we are using, or if you want to monitor that particular traffic as the inbound call or outbound call. So we have to define the respect to request per second, how many okay messages they can speak in the call. So that is the limit. Limit they have to define. Okay. 
So that is our voice or IP. So example, this is what I'm saying, SAP. So SAP is session initiation protocol. What is the port number? SAP port number. SAP port number. Session initiation 5060, protocol. 5060, sir. 5060 and 50. 5061. Yes, that's correct. It's one of the inter question. SAP, session initiation protocol, will be used for voice or IP calls and also in between two people if they want to call in the mobile so they will use sap protocol scp is also one of the telecommunication protocol so service connection connected protocol or skinny connection connected protocol okay so two different types of this is one of the voice or ip protocol basically this is also one of the voice or ip protocol okay here what exactly we have to do in the firewall level how many requests it should be accepted and also what the call limit Okay, so a couple of times we will receive the uh, automated email related call setups whenever you are calling toll-free number using machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, automated recorded videos and messages will be there. So that is example to this one only. So they'll put one of the limit. So how much time they have to speak and automatically call has to disconnect. Okay, so that is voice or IP related only. Next one is WAF. So it will prevent OASP top 10 category of the attacks. It will prevent OASP top 10 category of the attacks. Example, buffer overflow, SQL injection, cross-head scripting, XSRF, okay, null pointer, okay, man in the middle attack, broken authentication, broken access control, and so on. Even next generation firewall has a basic functionality of web application firewall also. Okay, this is one of the interior question. Morning, I already told you. So what is the difference between next generation firewall and web application firewall? Okay, so next generation firewall will do or monitor or block or allow from layer one to layer seven. Okay, but on the other hand, web application firewall is dedicated to applicable to prevent or block or monitor OS top 10 or layer seven attacks only. That is the main difference. WAP is a subset of next generation firewall. This is one of the entire question. The last couple of differences. Difference between firewall and IDS IPS. Difference between firewall and proxy. Difference between firewall and next, uh, web application firewall. So these are all the couple of entire questions we can expect. Okay. So coming back now here, just click on default. So here, uh, name of the respective security profile. And also here, okay, inspection device port ticket. So cross head scripting attack. It is one of the layer seven attack or nothing but application layer seven attack. Cross site scripting external. Okay. So extended meaning here, client side, DOM based, and also client side, server side, and DOM based. So these are all the three different types of cross -site scripting attacks. Next one, SQL injection attack. SQL injection attack external, generic attacks, generic attack extended, trojans, information disclosure. Information disclosure also one of the OS top 10 attack, known exploits. Okay. So as per the even bad robot, as per the OS top 10, couple of attacks are missing now. Example, broken authentication. Broken authentication is not showing here. Broken access control, it is not showing here. Insufficient logging and monitoring, it is not showing. Server side request forgery, it is not showing. Cross site request forgery, it is not showing. Buffer workflow, it is not showing. Right? So that's why whatever web application firewall feature is there in the next generation firewall, it will do basic functionality only, not full fledged capability or capacity or ability. Okay. Whatever web app is doing, it will take care of all OS top 10 as well as SANS top 25 related attack detection, monitoring prevention blocking also that is WAF. but now you can see whether all west top 10 category of the attacks are configured here no only couple of things that to cross it one of the very very popular attack that's why they configured this one sql injection attack okay trojans related information disclosure but couple of other famous attacks related to west top 10 are missing in future maybe portigate r d team they will add those signatures also Okay, and also you can see action here. So action is monitor. So hello, block. So it's as per my opinion, it's better to put all the actions as a block. All the actions, it's better to put as a block. Okay, 
because these types of these application layer attacks are very dangerous to us okay so that is about WAF related profile okay whenever any wasp top 10 related attacks are uh, appearing or maybe happening in the organization level based on this web policy either it will allow or monitor or block and so on okay so even what is the one of the log source for the web application firewall the examination firewall was top 10 category of the attacks of the log source web is one thing even next generation firewall also okay so that is our web related next one is ssl ssh inspection what are certifications we are using what are certifications we are using so those certifications has a suite 32 one of the one of the uh, vulnerability suite 32 is one of the vulnerability and also poodle attack hard to breed attack open ssl related attacks and so on okay so let's let's go and see now one of the profile um no inspection example so here ssl inspection option enable ssl inspection of okay multiple clients connecting to multiple servers meaning here our web browser of the respect to google chrome or maybe firefox or maybe internet explorer okay or maybe some other browsing related application so that client has connected to multiple servers, not only single application, multiple applications. Example, HDFC or Google or YouTube or Twitter and so on. Inspect everything as a mutual TLS authentication mechanism in between client of the browser. Example, my browser. My browser is this one. When I'm connecting to now google.com. So I'm connecting to now google.com. So in between now, my client browser, nothing but my browser to the backend Google server, it will scan and it will identify the, so what are SSL related issues are there? That is the meaning. Okay. If I'm opening one more example, net banking of HDFC. So in that scenario, once again, in between myself, my client browser to the respective backend of the HDFC bank server. Okay, so it can scan and it can identify the SSL TLS related vulnerability issues. Okay, come back here now. So that is the meaning of this one. Inspection method, SSL certificate inspection, it will scan and it will identify CS certificate. So there are two different types of certificates we discussed. One is self-signed. So self-signed meaning here, we can we can uh, create or we can, okay, so implement or we can download or we can generate on the tool itself. That is called self-signed. Purchased means third-party vendors. Example, GoDaddy or Komodo. Okay, so very sign or HLIDM. Okay, so these are all the couple of, even GTS. There are a lot of other vendors are there. So if you're purchasing from third-party, so what certificate we are using? we have to provide that particular certificate information here. If you are using self-signed, it's self-signed related. If you are in purchased, then purchased. Okay, Let, let's go and see now what certificate they are using. So they are in ZScalar. So they purchased from ZScalar. ZScalar also one of the vendor, they are providing certificate. So what certificate in the Portinet demo tool they are using? Zscaler, Gscaler. Zscaler also called Gscaler. Okay. Gscaler intermediate certificate. So they purchased from the Gscaler. Okay. So this certificate scanning also, it will scan it. Okay. Whenever any browser, example, now I logged into my respective portigate.portdemo.co in my browser. Okay. So example, I'm repeating once again. So portigate.portdemo.com. I opened here. So just I accepted and I provided username and password and so on. In between my browser to the backend, okay, so Portigate Zscaler CS certificate, it will scan and it will identify. Not only this one, is there any other applications are going on this firewall, it will scan those certificates also. Okay, 
So next one is uh, allo uh, block. So if is malicious related certificates or malicious related websites are there, it will block it. Okay, untested SSL certificate they are making it as a allow. Okay, so just they are monitoring. When you say allow, it's a monitoring part. Server certificate SNA check it's enabled. So what is exactly this role or rule or profile configuration in our organization level? What are applications we are using? It will scan and it will identify is there any vulnerabilities are existing. Additionally, even any malicious applications end users or clients that they are trying to access, either it can block or allow or monitor and give the alert notification. That is the importance. Okay. In case in our organization level, so what are certificate we purchased and deployed? So we have to select that particular certificate here. Okay, so now Portigate Firewall, it will validate and it will inspect what are applications and users or employees they're accessing in our organization level. It will scan if those websites or applications contain any malicious content, it can block it. So example, this one. And in case untested certificates, okay, somebody is responding back as a certificate authority. It will monitor. We can put block also this one also. Okay. So this is the way how it will scan it. Even not only this one, even additionally, certificate recovery, certificate expiry date, and also is there any vulnerabilities are existing? Example, SSL 1.0, SSL 2.0, SSL 3.0. Those are outdated versions. Those informations also will scan and it will give the alert notifications. Now we have to go and we have to see which certificate which certificate in our application level is using SSL 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, or TLS 1.0, TLS 1.1. These are all outdated ones. We should not use those versions. Okay. That is about SSL SH inspection. Application signature. Okay. So meaning here, whatever application category as a part of app control, we discussed morning application control. So this signature will continuously, it will update by Portinate vendor, Portinate vendor. So right now it is supporting 4,301 signatures, 4,301 signatures. So these signatures contains once again, so risk wise, which one is a risky applications, which one is not risky applications. So they're given risky application, non-risky application. Example, you can see Act Mobile VPN. It is one of the dangerous application. Act Mobile VPN. It's one of the dangerous application. Okay. Whenever any end user, they are trying to download Act Mobile VPN in their laptop, it will hit the signature and it will generate the notification or block. In this similar way, one more is Enoni Turn. It's one of the application signatures once again. If I'm going here, it is showing this indicates an attempt to access Enoni it is one of the VPN once again. It is also one of the VPN. These are all third party VPNs. Third party VPNs. We should not trust those VPNs. Okay. Somebody is trying to download all these certificates. Whenever any user, okay, they are trying to download these different types of VPNs from the Google, automatically Portinate vendor will validate and finally it will generate the alert notification or maybe it will block it based on the application control, whatever we have defined. So any desk, any desk also you can, you know already what's in by any desk. It's a remote access device or if you want to, okay, so access remotely another device, we can use any desk. We can share also. Okay, so this is one of the remote access related. Okay, so application, this is also medium related. So risk severity is there, okay. So that is what, so there are different, so continuously portinate R&D team, they can go and they can validate what are the severity level applications are there, medium related applications, okay, high related, critical related, low related, information related. Based on the risk wise, we can categorize these signatures. Whenever any end user, they are trying to access these applications, it will generate the alert notification or it will block it based on the water app control policy we configured or profile we configured. Okay. Morning we discussed IPS signature, right? Same concept here also. 
So here category wise, here technology wise, here risk wise. Okay, so the category is based on the category. What are 4301 application signatures? It is identified and discovered by the Portinet vendor. So those categories are industrial related. So many are there. Network service related, collaboration, general proxy storage backup. Technology wise, client server. So these are technology are peer to peer. These are risk wise. Okay. So IPS signature already morning we discussed. So 15,782, I think somewhere it is showing morning, right? So whenever any similar to 872, yeah. So morning already has shown this one, 15,872 signature. Similar type of abnormal or malicious or suspicious applications or traffic or content. Whenever any end user, they are trying to access, even external attacker, they are trying to send it to or compromise to our internal applications or internal servers or internal databases as inbound traffic. Okay, so both inbound traffic as well as outbound traffic. So firewall will monitor all these abnormal, malicious, suspicious pattern behavior as well as signature. And based once it is matching to this signature, automatically it will block. Okay. So that is about IPS signature. Okay. So next one is web writing overrides. In case if you want to override from existing website to new website, what is meant by overriding? So example, www.amazon.com. Okay, so that website, if you want to redirect it to another website, example, it will use the C name record, canonical name record, converting one frame of the web browser into another form of the web browser. Okay, so same concept here also. So if you want to override existing website to new websites, couple of people, couple of times, what will happen? Initially, whatever application they developed or whatever website they designed as web design. So later they will change that particular domain. Okay. So that means you are entering the old domain, then it will override to the new domain automatically. So that is called override, web rating override. Okay. So whatever web write, web, web, web based, override override related applications we have we have to configure here okay so that is mean by web rating overrides example they given evil.com hacking.org so these are the two different types of hacking related overriding of the applications okay in the similar way these are they blocked because it's a dangerous hacking related websites are always dangerous cnn.com and sfgate.com so if you are entering cnn.com, it will override to another sfgate.com. So they allow this one. This is a genuine website. Okay. Web profile overrides. So this is web rating and here configuring the grouping. Here grouping, okay. Here, so single entity. Example, we discussed part of SOFO CDR. Grouping of the similar type of people in a single team is called as group or device group or team group. Okay. So example, all L1 belongs to one group, all L2 is belongs to one group, all L3 is belongs to one group. In the similar way, same concept is applicable to here also. First, we have to identify the whatever override websites we have, that information we have to fill up in the web writing overrides. Then we have to group those web writing related, web override related grouping part. Okay. So that is about overall. Up to here only, up to SSL, SSH inspection only, we have profile, antivirus profile, web filter profile, video filter profile, DNS filter profile, app control, intrusion prevention, IPS, file filter, voice or IP, web application firewall, SSL, SSH inspection. Okay, so these many features it is doing by next generation firewall. Proxy capability it has, DNS capability it has, okay. WAF capability it has, IDS IPS capability it has. So that's why all other tools are a subset of this particular next generation firewall. Okay, next generation firewall will do one more thing. It's deep packet inspection, deep packet inspection. What is mean by deep packet inspection? Whatever inbound traffic and outbound traffic it is going on. So that IP packet, it will open and it can see is there any spoofing it's happened? Example, IP spoofing. And also every packet has a payload. 
if that payload has any malicious content or piece of written code is there, next generation firewall will identify because we are configuring antivirus profile. It's a malware related. Okay. It will scan everything IP packet. Okay. And in case any malicious content is there, that information also it will identify. And also TCP three-way handshake will complete always in between client and server. So example, you are the user, you are trying to access google.com in between you and also google.com TCP three-way handshake will complete to complete the TCP three-way handshake and TCP IP packet. It will use a couple of flags also. How many flags we have? How many flags we have? Six. Yes. So we have six flags are there. Even that flags information also we will see. Synchronization flag, acknowledgement flag, reset flag, urgent flag, push flag, finish flag. So these are the six flags. That is also in the equation. So once we are configuring these security profiles, now what we have to do? We have to go and we have to create policies or rules. Couple of vendors, they will call the policies. Couple of vendors, they will call it the rules. Okay. So just click on firewall policy. Okay. So here, before going and creating the rules or policies, first we have to gather the requirement. When you say gather the requirement, in our organization level, what are the different types of applications are there? And who is asking what, what type of applications? So example, HR team. So HR team, only though HR related application they will access. So we have to give permission to only HR team that type of applications. So maybe application development team, product development team. And also we have to see that applications or the traffic or that servers where exactly is located. So that's why we created three different type zones in the firewall level. One is internal or trust zone. Second one DMZ or DMZ. Third one is untrust or external or public or internet. So once you are gathering the requirement, now we have to go and we have to see from where to where the traffic is going on. Whether the traffic is going on from internal to DMZ or DMZ to external or external to internal or internal to external. Total four, six scenarios are there. Internal to DMZ is one. Internal to external, two. In this similar way, DMZ to internal, DMZ to external. Four, external to internal, external to DMZ. Total probability is how many? Total six probabilities. So we have to identify from where the where to where the traffic is going on. Source zone, destination zone. Source IP, destination IP. Source user, destination user. Okay. So you know right how to configure the firewall policy. I already defined. So rule ID, rule name, source zone, destination zone, source IP. Destination IP. Next one is um, port protocol, security profile configuration, action. Finally, log format. So these are all the different types. So generic way I discussed. Now we are seeing vendor wise. Whatever in the class I have shown. Example. Yeah, so whatever here policies I explained, rule configuration. So this rule configuration is a generic one. Now vendor to vendor, maybe one or two fields will be different. But whatever I said, it's a generic way for common to every vendor. Okay, so now coming back to here, Portugate vendor. So they provide a rule name. Okay, so they provided source zone, destination zone. So nothing but source interface, destination interface. Okay, role name, source zone, destination zone, or source interface or destination interface. Okay, so source from where to where, destination once again, not user here. This is interface, source interface, destination interface, source user, destination user. Okay, so next one, schedule, when it has to scan this particular or match or condition meeting. Okay. Always under the service. Service is nothing application. 
okay action and net network address translation whether we have to enable or not where is the from where to where the traffic is going on and security profile this is one of the very 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 important without a security profiles firewall it is like a transparent or virtual wire device when is a transparent or virtual wire whatever traffic will enter into the firewall same traffic will go outside also so that is called transparent or virtual it will not block anything it's a dummy device it's a dummy device so that's why first we have to configure the security profiles so that is the reason i explained security profile first after creating security profiles based on traffic from where to where it is going on and also whether it is email related or whether websites related okay there is not a mandatory every security profiles we have to enable each and every policy or role i am repeating once again so example security profiles how many we have antivirus 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 so remaining are signatures forget about those one 10 security profiles we have it is not a mandatory to enable all those security profiles in this particular role first we should understand what is the traffic we are monitoring okay according to that one only we have to define the security profiles log is nothing but it will log everything whatever back end it is generating activity computer recorded activity or computer recorded actions that is nothing but log so all the logs we have to so integrate these logs only we have to integrate it to sim tool let's go and see now block malicious by poti edr whenever any edr related malicious malware files are coming poti net company has a poti edr also so nothing but what is mean by this one poti edr what is mean poti edr endpoint uh... yes endpoint security tool antivirus or edr tool antivirus or edr malware detection and prevention tool okay block malicious by poti edr so whenever any malware related files are coming in the firewall level so using edr it has to block it automatically from where to where so all the internal interfaces all these are internal interfaces so wan the, what is this interface what this interface wan wan internet sir internet that's correct yeah all these are internal users traffic they are trying to access the external or public websites or emails also not only websites even emails also in between internal related data to the external related data as a email attachment as a website uploading or downloading or maybe through pen drives copying malicious url clicking on in between these source interfaces to the destination interfaces if any malicious content is there automatically it has to block that is the policy so source is this one destination is this one so these are all two interfaces okay now source one second all users destination so destination is port edr tool port edr tool so source is all internal users or applications to the destination that may be anything here when you say all anything destination where so edr tool okay here interfaces they configured here source user they configured all destination they provided edr tool information okay always in between end user if these interfaces malicious files are traversing in that scenario it has to block they name means block okay for denied related things why nat is required whether nat is required something it is denying already blocking whether security profile is required no need no need that's what we discussed the theoretical part also already we are blocking just what are theoretical we discuss just you can apply no practically that's all okay so that is what i said security profiles blocked activity no need to select anything okay so if are theoretically you are perfectly then there is no this is not much difficult to understand okay so now <clears throat> so action is deny 
So that's why we did not, there is no need to select any other security profiles because already it is blocking that particular activity related to malicious malware files tra traversing from the internal interfaces to the external related WAN interface, nothing but internet and in between the users, all users to the port EDR related files, nothing but malware related files in the EDR tool. Okay, that is one of the policy. Second one, DNS policy, domain name resolution or domain name verification or reputation check. So source user or source interface is any interface, destination interface is any, okay. Source any, all, destination is any, all. Okay, here schedule always it has to match this condition. Okay, service syslog and DNS. So the service, so syslog and DNS in the HTTP administrators tab morning whenever we discussed part of network, whatever services if you want to monitor those information we have to select. Example, I selected ping command, HTTP related thing. Additionally, we have seen so many SSH, syslog, DNS also. For this particular traffic related to DNS, so <clears throat> they are monitoring syslog and DNS part. Okay. Accept action is accept. Okay, NAT is enabled. Nothing but in this role or in this rule or policy, whatever traffic it is coming up to DMZ, from DMZ internal interface, it has to map to public interface. Mapping the private IP address to public and public IP or mapping the private interface to the public interface is called NATing. So this is already enabled one. That's why. It's an enabled NAT policy. Okay. Now certificate inspection. So why we are monitoring certificate inspection role only? So because domain, domain is a part of this particular fully qualified domain name, fully qualified domain name. Even we can enable one more thing, app control and web control also. In this particular profile, we can, we can, uh, we can enable DNS security profile example. So we can enable DNS filtering profile also. We can provide app filtering, web filtering also. These three also we can enable. Okay, because domain name resolution. Any end user, maybe they can access domain name. It's a part of our website resolution or domain name resolution. Okay, so we can enable additionally DNS filter, app control and web control also. Those three additional security profiles also we can monitor. Okay. And the logs are all. So this much of the bytes are terabytes or gigabytes or megabytes or kilobytes. It is occupying. Okay. So example, you can see syslog, nothing but all the logs. That's why it is occupying too much of the logs information, too much of the storage. Okay. So next rule is Intel NUC outbound. So maybe they have their own one of the Okay, policy name is or rule name is okay. FIT Intel NUC outbound. So nothing but from internal to external, one of the traffic is going on outbound connections. Okay, direct terminal may be different. Okay, so FIT NUC. This is one of the interface they configured. Port four also one of the interface. Morning we discussed this one. And to WAN interface. This which zone guys? Which zone is this one? Which zone is this one? Port 4 is internal, sir. Internal. What about this one? That is external internet. Yes, that's correct. So this rule is nothing but internal to external or trust to untrust. Okay. Here, trust to untrust or trust to trust are all six scenarios applicable. What about this one? These two? Trust to untrust. WAN is nothing but untrust internet. These are all trusted one. Okay. So that is what generic way I provided, but fortunate terminology wise, they are saying interface. So source interface, destination interface, otherwise source zone, destination zone, both are same only. Terminal, it is different. Palalto, they will say source zone, destination zone. In Cisco also, they will say source zone, destination zone. Here they are saying source interface, destination interface. That is the acronym is different. Okay. Now. Okay, so always and they given accept. Here you can see, you know, so security profiles, F and ER, 
ओके फोर्टी नेट नेटवर्क डिटेक्शन रेस्पॉन्स मॉनिटर ऑल हाई सिक्योरिटी सर्टिफिकेट इंस्पेक्शन सो दीज आर ऑल दी कस्टमाइज्ड कस्टमाइज सिक्योरिटी प्रोफाइल्स सी व्हाट आर वी डिस्कस्ड इज ए डिफॉल्ट वन डिड यू ऑब्जर्व आर नॉट दीज आर कस्टमाइज्ड वन ओके कस्टमाइज्ड सिक्योरिटी प्रोफाइल्स दे आर नॉट एनेबलिंग दी डिफॉल्ट वन सो एग्जांपल यू कैन गो एंड यू कैन सी सो दिस एफ एंड ई आर आर एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई नाउ सो दे हैव डन द कस्टमाइजेशन फॉर देयर साइड okay that one they are enabling the policies and objects now so most of the cases will do customization only based on our business requirement and those security profiles will enable when you say enable nothing but drop down list selection that's all so we have to select these four so this particular traffic whatever f nit2 outbound connection traffic they enabled antivirus scanning or malware scanning and monitor all okay next one is high security related so next one is certificate inspection ssl sh scanning part so this is the way how we have to configure all the policies so every organization will not create same policies guys it depends what type of traffic we are monitoring what the inbound traffic what the outbound traffic so these policies not constant whatever right now i'm sharing or explaining so organization to organizations these policies and also source zone destination zone source ip destination ip and also action may be different okay that business requirement we have to gather from the different stakeholders when i say different stakeholders all other team members example application development team product development team machine learning team hr team legal team who wants to access what type of applications from where to where the traffic is going on internal to dmz dmz to external external to internal vice versa okay after configuring all these policies finally what is the last rule or last policy implicitly deny yes implicitly deny okay this is the implicitly deny rule so what are policies we configured all other than if any additional applications or any other traffic is coming to the firewall level it has to i am repeating once again example there are 20 rules are there 20 rules are there so in the 20 rules so not even one of the end user is trying to do some of the activity it is not matching the condition top to bottom or top down approach for the firewall validation rule top to bottom or top down approach so whatever user activity is doing it is not matching to all the 20 rules so by default what will do so it will block it automatically that activity whatever user is doing because condition is not meeting okay so that is called implicitly deny in case user is required for activity now we have to take a, he has to raise a firewall request now i will give couple of scenarios example one of the phishing email is coming so on so ip address 1.1.1.1 after you have done all the analysis now that 1.1.1 dot 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 reputation is a malicious one what will what you will do what you will do what you will do 1.1.1.1 dot 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 we'll so malicious ip address will block it block so firewall. yeah block in firewall that ip address 1.1.1.1 1 dot one dot one dot one, we have to block in the firewall level so now what the name of the okay so i name of the um, rule we will give policy we will give blocking of ip address 1.1.1 1 .1 .1. okay what is the source what is the source you will select end user give me one second guys one second only one second huh? apologies guys yeah so 
yeah blocking of ip address 1.1.1.1 so name we will give that one source is any destination is 1.1.1 okay destination is 1.1.1 okay so next one source is any destination is any so schedule always service all action is denying even we can put opposite way also internal to external and external to internal also so blocking of ip address we will do where now in the firewall part of policies and object tab or rules tab okay that is one of the scenario one more scenario we can discuss example one of the brute force attack is coming from 120.1.1.1 you have done all the analysis now 120.1.1.1 is belongs to malicious ip what you what you will do what you will do blocking sir yeah blocking the ip address 120.1.1.1 in the firewall level now we have to come to firewall and so blocking of ip address rule name is blocking of ip address 120.1.1.1 source is any destination is 120.1.1 source are any or all destination is any or all schedule service all action is deny whether we have to select anything security profile no 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 need to select no. any security profile because already we are blocking for this one only as i said if you are dedicatedly selecting for cyber security sock operations okay if you don't have the firewall related access or tool in the implementation point of view then you have to write a separate ticket what are just now we discussed two scenarios one is phishing email related malicious content one is a brute force related malicious content for these two different types of incidents in case if you don't have the access okay then you have to come to firewall you no need to come you have to raise separate ticket okay then you have to assign to the firewall team they will block this one okay this is what they will do normally one more scenario i will give this is on the cyber security sock operation point of view couple of times so even though we provided application control web control couple of individuals they are not able to access the websites what they will do normally that is business oriented application what they have to do one of the application raise. develop yeah they will raise a ticket sir they will raise a ticket then they it will come to firewall team firewall team they have to enable so whoever user is required so that ip address of the user he have to provide here source to destination source is any destination is internet when source user 10.10.10.1 destination that particular website name okay so now it's better to security profiles you can select everything now because we are allowing the access now antivirus malware scanning dns malware dns scanning ids ip scanning web scanning everything because we are allowing the connection now so in that scenario we have to enable everything so one more thing we discuss part of ports and protocols ports and protocols one of the end user example date backup guy is not able to okay copy the data from mysql to postgres sql example one of the data storage or backup guy he is copying the data from the sql database to postgres sql database for that one obviously one of the port we have to open unfortunately he is not able to copy the data what he has to do now what he has to do request for the port of ticket yes that's correct request for the port to open ticket in the firewall level copying of the source is sql destination is postgres sql source user is whatever request is raised all this information he will provide now that request will go to whom approver part so whether that particular port whatever end user is requested copying of the data from the sql database to postgres sql database is there any risk is involved after approval is completed now firewall implementation team they will open the port here okay these are all the couple of scenarios guys 
this is what normally in the firewall l1 team l2 team and l3 team they will do okay so one is monitoring of the alerts and incidents second one is allowing of the websites allowing of the ports and also blocking of the websites and so on so this is the role of l1 l2 and l3 okay couple of places what we'll do normally so implementation will be done by separate team and operations will be done by separate team what is meant by this one alerts and instance monitoring will be done by separate team and allowing of the ports and also allowing of the websites blocking of the websites okay allowing of the ip addresses blocking of the ip addresses blocking of the domains will be done by separate team that is implementation team it depends which organization you are selecting okay so that is about overall policies always implicitly denies the last rule whenever any end user or even external people they are trying to access the internal application so what are policies we configured it will follow the top down approach or top to bottom approach whenever the condition is meeting it will stop there itself the okay packet it will not validate other roles that is called top down approach top to bottom approach so that is about overall firewall policies so they configured they provided several firewall policies multicast policy multicast policy is one of the rule okay so most of the cases will configure here itself here itself 98% of the cases will configure here itself so we'll go very rare cases to remaining policies in case if you are using ipv6 then we'll go for ipv6 ipv6 multicast policy if you are going for multicast policy multiple related policies we have to define with the source nat how many different types of nats we have how many different types of nodes nats we have natting what are three different types of natting what are the three different types of natting it's entire question static nat dynamic nat one more port nat yes static nat dynamic nat port nat these are the three different types of nat here s nat means static nat so your internal interface is configuring to okay only dedicate one public ip so that is called static nat so dynamic nat meaning a range of the ip addresses port nat means along with ip address we can map we can provide the port also that is called port nat there are three different types of natting we have static dynamic and port nat multicast policy we have to define static nat okay as i said we will use very rare cases we have to provide the name of the policy okay source address destination address protocol number nothing but port number action and the static nat information from where to where that particular nat is configured okay and ipv6 in case if you are using ipv6 anyway we are not using ipv6 then we have to configure this policy okay local in policy <clears throat> so these policies are configured locally in the firewall level it is applicable to only firewall level so what they have done for each and every application along with protocol they define the zone and service port number and action is accept okay so example http using tcp protocol using port 4 it's one of the interface configured it's internal interface port 80 accept within the local when you say local in policy internal to internal internal to internal see don't expect always we have to configure the policy from trust to untrust or trust to dmz sometimes we can configure the policies internal to internal also internal internal also example previously given one of the scenario sql database to postgres sql database whether two database with there in the single zone or different zones single, two, same zone think same zone internal zone example this policy only okay so example here i can put admin as a http and protocol and the interface is source and port number what are port number of the postgres sql database we want to open we can provide that particular port number 
internal to internal relational one interface only we have to specify because source and destination both are same only okay <clears throat> so all these are <clears throat> interfaces i already shown morning <clears throat> port for i think uh, network under network administrators uh, example network interfaces you can go for every interface what type of service you want to monitor okay so click on one of the any interface e example ha port 1 here it will provide the now http along with what are different types of services you want to monitor you can see this is what i am explaining there local in policy i am explaining this one only so in the interface example this is high availability interface in this interfaces administrative access https http ping fmg access ssh snmp ftm radius so these are the speed test Okay, these are all the different types of interfaces we want to monitor. Why? Because when couple of times when you want to troubleshoot, if you are enabling this one example, now one of the high availability interface. Now I will enable HTTP, HTTPS, ping command, SSH command, speed test, SNMP. Now I will give save. Whenever this high availability interface is going down, in that scenario, now i can go to command prompt or i will go to command line interface then i will give ping whatever interface ip address is there example 0.0.0.0 .0 whether this connectivity is working or not why the high availability port is down okay and also example maybe high availability interface speed is very very dead slow jitter or latency okay it's very slow performance SLA. Okay. In that scenario, now I will go to this interface and I will check the speed test. What is the speed it is working in this particular interface? How much bandwidth as inbound or outbound it's going on? Downloading and uploading. Speed test. Okay. So that's why we have to enable. In the local policy, that's what we have to configure. Local in policy. So source interface, what are the different interfaces it is configured along with what are the applications you want to monitor? Okay. Anything, if it's going down, then we can come here and we can access. Customized applications also they have done. Okay. So customized meaning here, as I said, example, one of the end user, okay, wants to copy the data. So that service port number we have to enable. So and so interface protocol. Okay, example, session initiation protocol we want to enable. So custom application, example, telecom application, protocol SAP, source interface. So example, WAN interface, because communication will go outside, internet. WAN interface, port number 5060-5061. Okay, that is what. So here we can even define the blocking of the ports also we can do here also. In the firewall policy also we can block, even here also we can block and monitor also. Next one is IPv6 access control list, IPv4. In case if you want to implement any access controls. Okay. When you say access control, whitelisting and block listing of the packets. Whitelisting of the block listing of the packets. Okay. So example ID, rule ID number name of the policy or name of the access control interface through which interface that particular traffic is going on as inbound or outbound source address destination address service what exactly you want to provide access control the example syslog syslog so source interface destination interface we have to define and the action so action is allow packets dropped we no need to define anything once it is hitting to that particular policy, it will appear the packets dropped or allowed. Okay. So that is about IPv4 access control list. In the similar IPv6, okay, DOS policy. So I said already at the time of discussion of, so flooding category of the attacks, flooding category of the attacks. 
firewall in the firewall level we have to define the throttle limit throttling or rate limit throttling or rate limit okay so this is the dos policy guys so what are the preventive mechanisms for dos and ddos or flooding category of the attacks anyone flooding flooding category of the attacks mitigation steps baseline sir okay baseline throttling throttling mm. main thing you are not saying these are all option 2 and option 3 whatever you said option 1 dos and ddos mitigation steps are flooding category of the mitigation steps it's one of the interior question famous interior question also in parallel to isp router we have to deploy anti dos and anti ddos tools yeah so first option one is in parallel to isp router we have to deploy anti dos and anti ddos tools that is the option one okay option two is a throttling throttling we can give in the web application firewall level firewall level server level also third one is baseline in case water baseline or threshold we have defined it is crossing that baseline or peaks of the traffic it is coming then it has to generate the alert notification so these are the three mitigation steps by the dos and ddos now here so dos policy we are configuring if you are going for palo alto cisco juniper directly we can define the icmp how much throttling and uh, tcp how much throttling udp how much throttling when you say throttling per second how many request okay so next one is uh, sync how many request everything we can enable okay but here fortinet is not supporting that much granularity unfortunately so it based on interface wise it is showing okay example policy of the dos id number 1 rule number 1 or policy number 1 name of the policy dos policy okay interface so obviously which interface these dos attacks will come which interface which interface dos attacks will come isp isp wan interface wan internet interface internet or wan lan wan dmz as per fortinet terminology morning i told you already okay so lan wan dmz right so interface so these flooding category of the attacks most of the 99% of the case it will come through attacker side only attackers to internal okay so attacker will target the millions of the flooding of the request to the targeted machine then finally he will do the compromise and service is unavailable because of this reason list mate and authorized users are losing the service that is called dos attack single attacker single user or single server multiple attackers single server that is ddos now interface we have to select always as a wan interface or internet interface or untrust interface source address we can put any destination address we can put any service example tcp udp icmp okay sync syn so these are all the different types of things we have to select so this is the dos policy part okay so throttling also we can define but unfortunately portin it is not supporting okay whenever any flooding of the traffic is generating in the okay organization level this portinet firewall now give the alert notification alert notification i will show palo alto also palo alto granularity is very nice as compared to portinet palo alto dns policy so portinet is showing as a based on the interface wise and also based on the source address and destination address wise but in the portinet palo alto side so here dns signature not this one one second
I put the DNS policy, not DNS DOS. So everywhere we have to select the protocols wise, TCP, pro, TCP flood, ICMP flood, UDP flood. Yeah, name of the policy DOS rule, aggregate profile DOS protection, DOS classified, source only, action is protect, and uh, we have to select that number also. Nothing but per second, how many requests it should be accepted. That is also we have to select. Yeah, this is what I'm referring. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Sir. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, yes, you can see here DAS protection profile. So sync flood per second. So first we have to go and we have to identify. So what is the average baseline? Or what is the maximum server should accept per second? How many requests? So synchronize. So example, 100 per second. UDP wise, how many? Okay, ICMP wise, how many? So I, uh, ICMP V6 wise, how many? IP flood wise, how many? This is what I'm referring. Okay. So here we can directly define the per second, how many we can define and also maximum how much. But what is portinity is supporting? Portinity is doing in different way. But both the same concept only. Portinity is configuring based on Okay, interface wise, source order, destination, destination otherwise. But Palo Alto directly we can define the throttling also. Okay, throttling also we can define maximum number or maximum request per seconds. Okay, that is the difference. So this is one IPv6 DOS policy. Okay, so in case if you are using IPv6 IP, then we have to define this one proxy policy. So if you want to integrate and proxy also, if you want to configure, so you can configure this one. Whenever any user is trying to access any application related to browser, implicitly by default, it is block. Implicitly, it is blocked everything. But if you want to monitor something and if you want to create a proxy policy, yes, we can create. We have to provide the outgoing interface. Okay, nothing but example. WAN interface, obviously outgoing interface, WAN interface, destination interface. Source, any destination is any, action is accept. Okay. So interface policy. We are not integrating with the proxy server. Where we are integrating proxy server integration? Which tab we are integrating proxy server integration? Here we are creating only policy role, condition meeting. Algorithm, network, network. network, network proxy, explicit proxy. Okay. So that is the proxy integration, but here policy configuration we are doing now. Okay. JTNA, what is JTNA? What is JTNA? In so far, also I have shown you. We should not trust anybody in the organization. What is that one is called as? Zero, Zero trust network. network. Zero trust network access. That's correct. I created one of the YouTube video also for this one. It is one of the trending technology in the market. Zero trust network access, one of the trending technology or a trending topic in the overall market. Nobody we should not trust. That is called zero trust, including employees also. Every time we have to verify the identity. Every time we have to verify the identity user identity, who is asking what, server, endpoint, application. So that is called zero trust network. Okay. So zero trust network, most of the case, identity and access management related tools we will use. IAM, Vokta, Azure AD, and also Azure, Vok Azure uh, Federated Identity, Amazon Federated Identity, we discussed it's a part of SOFO CDR tool. 
integrating with federated identity okay so even not only external attackers internal users also we should not trust maybe internal users also they can do hacking now here name of the jtna zero trust network access from source to destination tag of the jtna server ip address action profiles profiles all the profiles we have to configure okay that is zero this is one of the new tab basically even the last time whenever when i was teaching to the i think uh, 12th batch 12th batch online jtn is not there recently they added this one okay authentication rules so authentication meaning here how this portinet firewall can be accessed or portinet firewall can be accessed okay who wants to access this one so example give the name of the policy okay next one source address how many users example so and so user address protocol example http or https authentication scam either saml or maybe open id connect or wath 2.0 or radius there are different types of authentication related Applica application authentication is different network authentication is different so this application authentication application authentication it will use the open id connect wath 2.0 next one it will use uh, saml authentication mechanisms in case if you are using any portinet based single sign on or maybe third party example okta or maybe any other third party sso you can provide that ip address of the sso example okta then we, we have to provide the okta ip address so whenever the user now example I will log out. So example, now if I want to log in now, this particular portinet tool, so it will ask username and password, demo, demo. Click on login button. Now it will ask our Vokta related OTP, single sign on. Okay, that is called authentication guys. This is the, this is the meaning whatever they are saying. Okay, how to access the portinet tool? Okay, is there we are using third party? Okay, single sign on or whether we are using directly SAML authentication mechanism. Go back to policies and objects. So, jet authentication rules is over. Addresses. So, addresses meaning here, so fully qualified domain name. So, every time we cannot remember the computer name and the host name and so on. Example 10.10.10.1. .10 .10 app dot 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 com 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 2 database dot com 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 3 laptop dot hyderabad dot suresh in such a way we can define the fully qualified domain name fully qualified domain name okay example if you want to convert dhcp server 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1 to 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 255 nothing but one to 255 addresses okay so in such a way so we have to for why we have to do these addresses classification or addresses or fully qualified domain name or details for remembering purpose otherwise confusion will be there now we can go and you can see example cloud fap engine so this is belongs to 10881102.1 Whenever any traffic is coming from this IP, then I will come to know that it is one of the FAP engine. And it is going through this particular link, nothing but interface. In this similar way, so Porti EDR is an antivirus tool. So this IP address of the respective antivirus tool is 5.250.170.51. Whenever any traffic is coming from this particular ip address that is belongs to port edr just for our convenience purpose we are mapping all this okay ip address along with okay fully qualified domain name or host name or computer name or system name and also through which interface the traffic is going on okay just for our convenience purpose we are doing this one this is applicable to every tool okay next one is uh, internet service databases so here is in case any internet services 
okay already f and portinet r and d team they are configuring and also they are integrating with our portinet vendor okay so that name of the respect to internet service whatever it is supporting till today okay so you can see example dns it is supporting ftp it is supporting okay icmp it is supporting ldap it is supporting net bias information it is supporting phishing email or outbound email so in such a way these are all the so far internet based internet based databases or services it is supporting and also this traffic it will go either one direction or both the directions when you say both both the direction bi directional when you say destination one direction when you say destination only one direction when you say both bi directional and the number of entries till today how many number of entries it is tried and it is verified okay you no need to configure anything here this vendor will take care we no need to do anything vendor whatever supported internet services portinet is doing okay so far 1858 we no need to do anything here just leave it this one so next one services so services here whatever services or applications portinet vendor is supporting example general related general related services web access related web access obviously will use http https general example ping command ping command and all messaging or file access okay samba smb ftp ftp network file system nfs sftp okay all those are file access related email imap these are all just supporting related we no need to configure anything also here whatever portinet vendor is supporting till today okay so these are all messaging protocols these file access protocols web access protocols ping related protocols okay network services protocols authentication protocols these are network authentication ldap authentication kerberos radius one more is what is that anyone one more network based authentication mechanism taxas tacacs taxas plus terminal account based okay uh, terminal account authentication mechanism okay so kerberos mutual authentication ldap active directory authentication okay radius is remote access remote access style interface some service radius server okay taxas is not supporting but palo alto is supporting taxas also so just now i told you authentication related application is different authentication is related to network is different network will use these are all the different types of authentication mechanism application can be used saml and also open id connect or oauth 2.0 remote access are these are all the protocol telnet okay ssh rdp also rdp these are all three things virtual terminal okay in the similar way other related okay um, services so far whatever portinet is supporting see up to here where we have to configure or implement maximum firewall policy only that's what i told you 99 percent 98 percent of the case firewall policy additionally dos policy we will configure remaining everything is by default there is no need to configure also just leave it okay schedules when you say schedules so when you want to get the signature updates antivirus updates malware updates okay next one is uh, hids hips update network ids network ips update web application firewall updates this one we have seen part of sofa cdr also sofa cdr what is the policy we will call it as in sofa cdr tool getting the schedule updates what we can call it as forty guard sorry in sofa cdr sofa cdr policy name policy name what are the policies will configure sofa cdr in sofa cdr tool what are the policies we'll configure policies guys threat prevention app control web control what else what else 
file integrity monitoring update management unlock dlp these are all the policies we will configure the sofa cdr so whatever i am asking just now update management just compare whenever you are learning the tools compare one tool with another tool so that it is easy to remember okay so in the sofa cdr we can call it as update management in the portina terminal they will call it schedules of getting the regular antivirus dlp web application firewall proxy ids ips dns wiso ip file related all those we can call it as scheduling of the manual updates so porti guard will give that's correct okay so next one is uh, virtual ips so virtual ips we will configure here ips ip address information okay so nothing but what is the range of the ip addresses what is the range of the ip addresses example all the interfaces one ip address range related to server server lan okay server lan 10.10.10.12 10.10.10.255 okay next one database lan 10.10.10.22 10.10.10.255 in such a way we have to configure the ips okay so just configuring of these ips example here they configure multiple portinet related devices virtual ips okay next one ip pools pool of the ips from where to where what is the range of the ips enter range of the data center wherever this firewall is deployed wherever this firewall is deployed okay and also utilization of this ip and also utilization of the each and every ip pool utilization and here individual ip utilization nothing but how much how much utilization it has taken each and every ip so protocol options so just uh, you can keep this one as a default one there is no need to change example click on this one so these are all the different types of protocol so far portinet vendor is supporting http 80 smtp 25 you know pop 3 110 imf 143 ftp 21 or 20 ntp 19 nntp not ntp what is ntp port number what 110. is ntp 110 123 yeah. yeah okay these are all mapping part is by default we know, we are not changing anything here tropic shaping okay so tropic shaping mean how much bandwidth okay so on an average of threshold it is coming maximum bandwidth okay so this is what so till okay from up to zdi tna2 till tropic shaping we can keep everything is by default we no need to change anything as an implementation okay i am repeating once again zdi zdi na2 till tropic shaping we no need to change anything just you can leave it as it is by default okay in this policy subject there is no confusion guys i am giving too much in depth analysis couple of people are not able to understand i know that but only one thing in the policies and objects what exactly we have to do we have to create firewall policy just you can remember that that one that's more than sufficient first we have to gather the requirement from the respect to business or stakeholders from where the where traffic is going on we have to identify and then create a policies okay because portinet vendor is supporting so many policies we no need to configure all these policies we are configuring firewall default policy that is more than sufficient additionally das policy also these two remaining from zdi tna nothing but zero trust network access to up to traffic shaping you can keep everything is default so default you are keeping also it can identify and it can block it can give alert notifications as well okay so that is about overall policies policies based on organization to organization it will vary based on the business requirement it will vary it is not like same whatever we are showing here maybe example you are selected for wipro your client is related to netherlands bank dutch bank okay 
don't expect same policies you will see in the dutch bank based on the dutch bank business Sorry, guys, some internet issues. It is reconnected. So, what is the total final conclusion for the morning session and evening session? Okay. So, morning, whatever we discussed, and evening class also, whatever we are discussing now. So, these two are complete, complete implementation level. You no need to remember everything. Okay. So, just uh, as a as a my suggestion, if you are selecting for firewall dedicated vacancy. L1 or L2 or L3 level, you can go. Even they were selected for the implementation level, please don't go and join for the implementation of the firewall. Why? Because straight away, instead of going to the uh, operational support and you are going for implementation, it is difficult to manage. Okay. First, as per my advice and opinion, you can work for six months in case if you are selected for the firewall. Maybe six months you can work for the operational support. Later you can switch over to the firewall implementation. Coming back to the dedicated to SOC operation, what is our role in firewall? What is our role in firewall? Firewall logs integration and also doing the packet capture and also in case any drill down it is happened, analyzing of those logs, that's all. Nothing else we can do in the firewall level. As I'm repeating once again, in case you are selected for this Splunk or IBM Curator or Exabeam or Azure Sentinel, what is your role in the firewall? Okay, firewall just logs integration and doing the packet capture. Other than these two, nothing else you will work on this if you are selecting for SOC operations. Whatever I am teaching, entire information related to dedicated to firewall vacancy. Dedicated to firewall vacancy. Implementation. L1, L2, L3, even design also. Hope it's clear. Okay. So as I said, whenever any malicious IP address blocking, allowing of the websites, blocking of the websites, so then we can raise a separate ticket. But you should be aware of all this concept at least. Blocking of IP address, how we can do. Blocking of URL link. Blocking of website and so on. Okay. So that's all for today evening. So what is the total... Okay, so today class, network related configurations, policies and objects and policies and objects only firewall policy. That you can go and you can play with this tool. If you have any queries, let me know. Yeah, Naeem Pasha is asking, sir, I'm not able to understand. Okay, so class is a little bit fast because all these topics are completely, it's a new to you. Okay, and also, I'm explaining in depth, like implementation level. That is the reason you are not to cope up. Okay. So you are not going for the implementation level, just operational support only. As I said, operational support, you will not, no need to do this much in depth. Okay. So all these things for future purpose. Okay. Hope it's clear. Yeah, any other doubt? Yes, Kranti. Uh, in the policies, you have said about addressing tab, right? Yes. 
in that you said we have to whatever the things we are interfacing with our uh, firewall we have to maintain the address can't the uh, ad do that no network admin team also they will want it's a good question network engineer team is there right network engineer team or network admin team they will map okay so see admin active directory or sys admin team or windows admin team they will map only just okay computer name our laptop name our backup name and workstation name that's all but they will not take care of the router name switches name load balancer name printer names and so on right so only in the active directory cases they will do it but what about remaining network devices and database servers those who will take care that is the reason so it's better to map that one in the firewall level also whenever any traffic is coming we can go and we can see easily there is no dependencies there there is no need to ask other stakeholders so that's why it's better to map okay okay just for identification purpose yeah any other okay guys thank you so much and good night tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock class is there 8 o'clock okay guys good night okay sir thank you thank you <laughs>